So if we go quickly through the chapters, it says uh, marketing channels that uh, you set. And uh, let's see, it says here you set. Ouch. Uh, says sets of uh, interdependent organizations they participate in the process in the process of uh, making products or services available mm -hmm. for use or consumption so everyone who help people uh, reach their products it says here you've got the merchants agents facilitators you guys are okay with these uh, we've got the ultimate selling price you need to take care of your merchants or your distributors you know if you pay on average seven percent advertising you need to pay 30 to 50 percent to the channel member do you see do you guys know those small book shops that sell books yeah. they normally have half 50 percent of the price of the book so if you buy it if the book is two thousand they make a thousand do you see uh now of course if you if they, if they sell the book for two thousand they make a thousand they have a good incentive to have your book available do you see because they will get good return now if you go and you sign an agreement with them and you give them only Let's say 10% only. Do they have an incentive to buy your book and make it available? No. You see, they will not invest. They and if they don't anything? invest, then you need to sell it on credit. And then how much are you going to put still on credit? You know, this was going to be, you know, and then on when are you going to collect it back? So it becomes another uh, business issue. <coughs> if you think about push strategy and a pull strategy, Push strategy, if I decide to uh, go ahead and take my products and talk to the distributors and tell them you have to keep it and maybe I sell on credit, I give them training on my product, I give them a lot of training, brochures, that's pushing. So how about Pull strategy, you're mainly advertising. So you're basically asking the customer to go request it. You so see, if 10 customers go to the same shop and they say, I need to get this product. So I need this product. What will the you know merchant there do after the tenth request for that product? You will not. You go it. buy it. Do you see? You know, for example, this is what they say. You know, you go to the bookstore and you say, I want this title. Another one goes, say, I want this title. And a third customer comes, I want the same title. Now, of course, they record all of the requests. You know, by the fourth one, they order it. So they make it available. So the next order, you know, they have their product available. Do you see? You know, I was talking to one of my uh, mentees. Uh, they have a project on Asal. So they sell Asal. And uh, now, when you go to the pharmacy and you say, I want Asal, it's, 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 uh, it's not uh, normal honey. It's a uh, medication honey type. So if you go to the pharmacy three times saying, I want this special honey medication for my kid, uh, and another time to throw an order by a doctor for this honey and a third what will the pharmacy do will go, go order this honey because the customers are requesting it do you see and then the customer comes back to you saying hey please give me so that's another way to actually pull your products you know to the customer uh, so here we've got the multi-channel uh, marketing as you when you go through more than one channel a value networks is that everyone in the network they add value so that you can become a king uh, role of the marketing channels uh, what do these people do uh, they uh, contact they give you experience they uh, specialize they give you ability to uh, have a scale of operations so it's uh, scale, of operation. scale of operation you can be big right so let's say uh, you know if you've got you know uh, small if you sell lemon juice and you have your own place, you have one location. Imagine now if you can have like 100 people sell lemon juice for you. You see, you can make huge money. You can scale your big. It talks about the functions of uh, <coughs> intermediaries. These people, they uh, give information to customers. They promote the product. They negotiate with the customer. They may provide the order, the finance, the paperwork. They may do an installation. They may take some risks. They may do the physical distribution. They uh, process the payments. They take the title. So a lot of things these people do. Uh, next, we've got this channel, uh, channel uh, functions and flow. We've got this forward flow and a backward flow. You know, your company, you give uh, transportation communication to the customer. Customer learn about your products and services. 
and then we've got this back order where orders and payments and money and in the middle you have all of these uh, these are five uh, marketing flows physical title payment information promotion are you guys okay with all of these that kind of show you the customer will pay the bank the bank will pay the dealer the dealer to the dealer bank manufacturer bank so, so you can see the flow of money it goes from <laughs> one bank to the other but maybe the ownership it goes only through those and then uh, you know here you've got the actual physical distribution you can see how information go between this between the customer and the manufacturer and then also between the customer and the dealer between the dealer and the manufacturer uh, so that's how the distribution become important uh, here we're talking about zero level direct marketing channels that's when you go direct to the customer there's no intermediary you guys remember Dell website you go to www.dell.com you order from there you see uh, so Dell get their stuff from their supplier right so the supplier will make the chips and the memory card and then sent them all to Dell. Dell received the, cust the order from the customer. Directly from Dell, where does it go? To shipping somewhere. company, customer. Do you see? So maybe there's a shipping company in the middle. Do you guys remember the idea of insourcing? Have you heard of insourcing? Like opposite of outsourcing. Or, yes. No, different than outsourcing. Insourcing is what? Sir, when you, when you uh, for example, I make, uh, I supply myself. Me as a company, for example, like uh, IBM, when they started to produce uh, their goods by themselves, no need to for a supplier. No, this is like normal operation. You make laptops, you do the laptops yourself, and you sell the laptops. The insourcing is uh, the example was uh, Toshiba. They do insourcing to uh, FedEx. Let's say that you customer you have a Toshiba laptop. You call uh, the company Toshiba. To the Bay Toshiba, I've got a problem with my laptop, it's not working. They do the troubleshooting online. Okay, you've got uh, your hard disk is broken. Uh, send it to us and we will fix it. They send me, okay, so uh, how do I send it to you? They tell you, don't worry. You print this uh, PDF file and the PDF says uh, Federal Express Airway number and then the number. You just take this paper, stick it and call FedEx and they will pick it up. You don't pay, us, you don't pay anything. Then the FedEx will uh, knock on your door, say, okay, I've got to receive this order. I, where is the package? I will pick it to deliver to Toshiba. The FedEx guy will take the laptop, go. Two days later, the same guy or different guy will come from FedEx. Here is your laptop fixed. The laptop did not touch Toshiba hands. It only touched FedEx. FedEx people, they take the laptop to FedEx facility they change the hard disk, they give you the new one, they have been trained, and they return it back. Do you see? Because FedEx, they have a lot of offices, and one of their offices, they do Toshiba insourcing service. So instead of they take it to Toshiba, and Toshiba need to do the work in their facility, let Toshiba, FedEx do this business, we pay them, you know, this much. Because remember, for FedEx, they are guaranteed now all of the shipment, are FedEx, they will not go to UPS or DHL or so for FedEx, this is another business on the side. We make more money and at the same time we do the delivery. Yeah, so the idea here is uh, uh, so channel levels, we've got this uh, zero level channel, uh, one channel, two, three. Uh, here, when we've got business to business, it's the same thing. It's just, uh, you know, it's a business to another business. That's a B2B. And then you need to take some decisions. You need to see what customers really want. People want their computer to be fixed quickly. Is this the most quickly way to do it? Let's do it. Uh, objective and constraints. What are some of the problems that you may have? And identifying and evaluating alternatives. So what are my options? Customer needs and wants, people want good price. Want, people want it convenient. Maybe people want it fast. Uh, maybe people want to go and shop. You see, remember uh, Gap? Yes, sir. 
you know, their objective is to have a nice shopping experience. So they're more into the distribution business. And uh, people want to get the experience of shopping. How many people love shopping? Yeah, you enjoy, you go, you see, you return, you come back. It's fun. And also product assortment, where you are and who are you next to, do you see? Sometimes you want to open a shop next to another shop that people love to shop in. Do you see? They might stop by. They'll stop by. And then we talked about what people, customers, and customers can value different things in different countries. You know, by itself, this slide is like a, this can be like a thesis. Do you see? What do people want in shopping, right? Uh, channel service outputs is uh, spatial convenience. Some people like to go to big stores. Uh, people like to maybe walk in, uh, shop. What, what's the best supermarket to shop in? Because what? It's big. You see? Space by itself is maybe organized. The Maran is bigger for some people. It is bigger. It is bigger. So but sometimes people prefer, uh, you know, the waiting delivery time, how long it will take. Uh, what place you go and you know it's fast? Restaurants yeah, restaurants, which Shibani. one? Shebani, you go, it's immediately it, you get it. Some people prefer the service, you know, what services they provide you. Uh, some people will look at the variety you want to go to a place because you know you have a big variety. That's why you will not be stuck with one or two. Some people will look at the lot size, how big I want to buy in quantities, and so uh, so these are uh, some of the uh, service outputs. What's spatial convenience? Spatial convenience, the degree to which the marketing channel makes it easy for customers to purchase the product. Remember, if sometimes you go to this uh, store where you know. You go, you have a big space, you can see all the things you want, you take whatever you want, enough space. Do you see? Sometimes you go to the place where they don't have a full service. Uh, you know, they, they you know, maybe it's a smaller or maybe they have to pick it up for you. Do you see the idea of what degree are you uh, making it easy for the customer to purchase? Maybe if, uh, you know, uh, this spatial convenience has to do with space, like from space. Objectives and constraints, we've got marketers should, should state, you know, what is their objective with these channels? Uh, you know, so maybe if you choose this particular channel member, maybe because uh, they have, uh, they're ready for a, you have a bulky product, then you need to find a distribution channel that will work with this type of, uh, maybe your, uh, huh? For example, if I sell Pampers, I need to have a place where they have a lot of space to take because Pampers takes a big space, do you see? So we need to, you know, we need to be able to, uh, and remember in Pampers, you need place where you have like six sizes and each size has different volume number, you know, the quantity itself. So you need to have big, do you see? So you are on a bulky, so, do you think you know for uh, you know for some of these shops would they be happy to take your products if it would take a lot of space? No, sir. Sometimes they prefer a small. Sometimes it's a good city. Let's see. Sometimes let's say you have a very small product. Let's say you have a juice. Did you see those small juices? The you know two fifty milli, very small. But if you go to the refrigerator, there is you know limited space. Do you see? So you know the idea of you know, how much is your, how big is your product and how much space they can, you know, maybe if you have a bulky product, you, you may have constraint to become a problem. Sometimes, let's say if you, if I sell juice, now, now all of the juices are maybe this, this is the highest length. If my juice is like this, I have a big problem to find a refrigerator to take it. I need to empty like two shells in order to have my product there. Do you see? This can be a constraint. Do you see? So, uh, so did you see Red Bull? They have their own fridge. Do you see? 
and they do it for you know it's also a promotional uh, reason but also from a distribution perspective when customers walk in they see their own you see remember uh, Red Bull yes. but that's their strategy it's their decision you know even their car did you see their car a Red Bull car same idea <coughs> So they, they have an objective is to, you know, get attention through distribution. Uh, identifying channel alternatives. So these are different channel alternatives. Uh, identifying channel uh, channel alternatives, the type of intermediaries, the number of intermediaries, the terms responsible. and responsibilities. Who's responsible of what in case? Uh, who pays when they pay? Do they pay in advance? Do they pay late? What happens if customer complains? What Types of intermediaries, we've got those dealers, uh, direct to consumers, uh, OEM. Do you know what's an OEM? Combined. Yeah, combined. Uh, satellite radio manufacturers, you know, this is how. We've got the number of intermediaries. You want to have all of the people that are intermediaries or only one? Or maybe very few? Or you select them, you choose them. For example, I want my uh, Samsung to be available in the Maran and Huda, uh, you know, in this small uh, Sudani shop. Um, evaluating channel alternatives, uh, you know, for example, here, if you talk about the cost per transaction, if you do a face-to-face -face transaction, it will cost you $4 for every transaction. Let's say here, if we're talking about, uh, let's say, telecommunication services, if you start to sell through a face-to-face, -face, you know, $4 per transaction needs to be bulk through an ATM machine 27 cents through an online transaction cost per transaction is cent you see but you need you know for Amazon they have billions of you know transactions so it will be millions of dollars of cost and uh, phone transactions you know by phone it will cost you some and this show you the value added versus cost differentiation so we start internet that's, uh, you know, maybe very low value added, but it's also low cost per transaction. And then, you know, telemarketers, more expensive, retailer stores, distributors, value added, and Salesforce. Do you know what Salesforce? You hire people to go sell your products. Yes. And this is the pre-given analysis. It says, you know, this is the number of sales you need to sell in order to cover. This is a very important question. This is the number one business question in any business plan. Like for your projects tomorrow, you have to have some sort of an indication. It doesn't have to be calculated, you know, 100% accurate. But you need to tell me, if I am going to do this business, I sell burgers, you know, how many I need to sell? Not necessarily you tell me, you know, seven burgers and a half per day. You need to tell me that, you know, on per month, you need at least to get sales worth of this much money. You know, this is how the business will generate money. Below that... I'm losing. Over that, I'm making money. Here we're talking about channel member decisions. Uh, you know, you need to train them, select them, evaluate them. Uh, do you guys remember when we talked about evaluation, what they do? Remember Western Union example? Yes, sir. When they send someone... And they send someone to check. Do they have lights? Do they have a guard? Is the sign clear? Was the paperwork available? Was there a pen extra? Did the person smile? Did they say thank you at the end? Did they... Do you see? Uh, we talked about this uh, horizontal marketing systems. Uh, you know, you get together through. Uh, here you got the uh, multi-channel. All of these different ways. Vertical, you've got big boss, and then small, the same. Hybrid grid here, when you start to make it as a grid, you know what's a grid? Like a chart, okay? So here you will make like a check mark. It says here, let's say, uh, number one says here, internet. And then says, gather relevant information about the internet. National account, direct sales, telemarketing, direct mail. Uh, retail stores, uh, distributors, and so uh, so all of these over here, you know, you've got these vendors, and then here you've got this demand generation tasks, uh, you know, gather relevant information about this. Uh, maybe here over, uh, see ownership transfer, uh, you know, right here. So this kind of give you an indication about the different channels, the different merchants, uh, 
what company you need to think through their channel architecture, determine which channels should perform which functions. So here we've got this conflict, uh, cooperation, competitor and, co and competition. What you want, you want all of your, uh, you want all of your uh, distribution channels to be in the right direction, right? You want them all to do the same thing. You want actually to copy them. Do you see? But that doesn't always happen. They always screw each other. Do you see? Everyone try to cheat on the system. So they start to have conflicts. So what do you do if you have a conflict? You have to solve this conflict. How do you solve this conflict? Either vertical or horizontal. Let's see. Vertical is when this guy has a problem with this guy. When this guy has a problem with this guy. Do you see? That's vertical. Horizontal is when this and this one here on the same level, they have a problem. Okay. So if Adam uh, dealer has a problem with Taiz dealer, is that horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. horizontal. They're on the same level. Okay. If uh, Sana'a dealer has a big problem with Sana'a dis big distributor, with the Sana'a point of sale, vertical. that's a vertical. Do you see? Sometimes they have a problem. The dealer starts to take the commission of the point of sale. And the point of sale starts to screw the mother company when it comes to the promotion. And they lie. Here we're talking about how you manage the conflict. Either you pay, you become the middle, you go a legal course, or maybe employee exchange. <coughs> Let's see. Next, we've got this uh, e-commerce. You guys know what's a brick and click? Brick and click, that's where it's online and it's offline. And pure click, they're only online. And then business to business e-commerce, they're you know, through computers, you do business. And you know what's a brick and mortar? That's when it's an online, uh, where it's offline only, called brick and mortar. That's offline only. They don't have online existence. But most of the businesses today, they have you know, some sort of a click. Here we're talking about e-commerce, uh, the idea of text promotions, idea of uh, GPS features. Now these are becoming like one. Uh, so these are uh, marketing practices. And that's the end of the chapter.